Okay. So um, I'll be on again tomorrow. So today I'm going to talk about depletion studies primarily. And uh, tomorrow I'll talk a little bit more about uh, pastures. But uh, I am involved in a couple of things. And, and one is the um, ag water optimization uh, bill. And um, what that study focuses on is um, reduced irrigation consumptive use while maintaining irrigation uh, pro productivity and crop productivity and profitability. So, so that's kind of a hard thing to do because plant water consumption is what produces yields. So if you're going to consume less water, you're always a little bit worried about how that is going to impact your yield uh, just because of the the physiology of photosynthesis and but one of the projects that um, we looked at and we're still looking at it is um, and it kind of follows along with some of the things that Tina probably talked about that um, one is can we reduce the losses that don't go through the plant and so I know with those drops and with the mobile drip irrigation you know that's trying to get the water into the soil um, before it uh, blows away or evaporates and, and so that it can be used by the crop. The same thing with onions. Um, furrow irrigation has been the traditional method to irrigate onions, um, but there's enough value in that crop that um, you can spend the money to put a drip system on it. In fact, there's even farmers that, that drip use a drip system early on and then switch to um, a surface system just because of the water management. And so more and more farmers are using drip irrigation and we're just wondering how that impacts it. And this is primarily in uh, Box Elder County and Weber County and, and perhaps some in Davis County. And, and it's, uh, it's important to a lot of people because of the Great Salt Lake and anything we can do to grow a crop with less depletion is, is important. And depletion is important because um, of our water rights, which a lot of downstream users are, are uh, reliant upon return flows and just water that's not consumed beyond that amount that's diverged, diverted. And then another project I'll talk briefly about is uh, forage crops. And uh, this is down in the Escalante Valley, the Burrell Enterprise, Modena, Newcastle area. And it's looking at comparing alfalfa water use, which is, of course, you know, frost to frost crop or hard frost to hard frost crop compared to um, two crops in a single year, which would be corn silage, uh, corn planted approximately June 1st, and then um, triticale planted September, October time period. So a winter crop and a summer crop. And um, so we instrumented our sites. Uh, the first year we did uh, West Weber and we uh, have a weather station there. We have a series of soil moisture sensors. And then we also uh, looked at soil temperatures because that'll help us determine how much water is evaporating from the soil versus going through the onions. And then we put flow measurements on all the tail water, all the deliveries, and we also took yield samples. And we are working on an economic analysis of that. Uh, the farmers tell us that uh, Fertilizer use is much less, and, and we know that because they do a lot of fertigation. And then, um, and the yields are typically higher. Last year was kind of an unusual year, but this year seems more typical. And so we'll have two years to do that cost analysis with. And here's uh, a slide that just shows um, the positioning of the soil moisture sensors. We put two sensors, these are TDR sensors, uh, very good sensors. Um, uh, I think just almost as accurate as sensors you can get. Um, and uh, the, the onions are grown in, in four, four rows on a bed and the drip tape is put in between them or they're irrigated from the surface. So we looked at water below the furrow, water below the bed, and then we looked at at the deep soil moisture to see if we were, if that was changing, if we were getting deep percolation. And you can kind of see in these two fields where we put those sets of sensors. Um, this is at the beginning of the year, um, just as, as planning. We waited until they were up 
but before they irrigated, before we put our sensors in so that we could carefully put our sensors in without killing one onion. <laughs> that, that was the goal and I think we were always able to do that. So, so we didn't want, and then, and then our uh, instrumentation is, is um, you know, 10 or more feet away from where we put our soil moisture sensors in. So when we go to check our, our data loggers, we're not in that area. Uh, here, here's where the sensors go in the ground a little later in the year. Uh, you can see the onions are, are growing right up against those uh, sensors. And here's just another picture of one in the field. Um, and so we, each of those sensors represents a, a block of soil. And with that block of soil, we got percent soil moisture by volume. So we can calculate a volume of water and convert that into a depth be, by dividing it by its area. And then we do a, water mo a soil water balance. And uh, from that, we can calculate ET. And it, it's not that straightforward because a lot of times you have a lot of things going on. And so we've developed methodologies that you can kind of look at what's deep percolation and what is not. And we didn't really have any deep percolation with drip, but with surface, um, this is a surface field. You can see they irrigate every week. That's their irrigation turn and they, they take it or leave it, and with onions, two weeks is, is too long, and um, sometimes they get the water 24 hours, so they'll just use two sets of 12 hours, but you can see they put on a, a lot of irrigation, and these readings are every half hour, but some of those hours, they are um, at saturation, and then they, in the next day or so, it drops off. Oops. Uh. What's going on here? There we go. The next day it, it, it drops off fast. That's drainage. So you can see irrigation and drainage. And then these are the shallower ones. You can see like, you know, that's kind of the day night steps as they go down, but that's the soil moisture uh, primarily out of the shallower uh, sensors that are in the, in the beds. And then uh, this is just if you took midnight to midnight, this is the change in soil moisture. And you can see filling and draining, and then the stretches of four or five days where you have pretty good ET numbers. And then this is, this is how it looks. Uh, if you look at change in soil moisture, absolute change, uh, you can kind of see where ET is, where drainage is, and where irrigation is. And if you take those middle numbers, and you can assign dates to them, but that's kind of the, the you know, the data where we don't have to worry about guessing how much irrigation, although we know how much irrigation, we don't always know the uniformity in the field. And so we can calculate ET. Uh, here's, here's the much drier soil in the drip. You can see that at least on this site, the, the deepest one is the bottom. It never moved the whole season. And really we were just watering the, the top few sensors um, the whole season. And then this is kind of the way it looks day to day. We had one sensor that just was not getting much water, only about half as much water was applied. Um, th and this was in a drip field, so a kink in the line, and it was the furthest sensor from the source, and it was highest in it, and a little higher in elevation than some. Um, day by day for the drip, you can see that, you know, most of the time we're probably less than, uh, a lot of the times we're probably bouncing around 0.2 inches per day. And then the same thing as we did before. Soil temperatures, this is, this is taken every 15 minutes, but this kind of average for the days. You can see that whether you're drippers or surface irrigation, the low temperatures stay the same, but the high temperatures, it gets much warmer on the drip irrigated ones because of the dry soil. And uh, sometimes it's, 30 degrees warmer. And that's um, energy coming in that's not used to evaporate water. The cooler soil is a sign of evaporation, energy going to evaporation of water. And um, so th this is just some of the things that we learned um, with the, here with uh, surface irrigation. We applied a lot of water. In fact, I think it was over 60 inches, but the ET was about 21.3 in 83 days. 
uh, so about a quarter inch a day. Um, if we look at the drip irrigation, we were probably just slightly over two tenths of an inch a day. Uh, they harvest about a month earlier, um, so the yields were a little lighter on the drip, but that could, we had different plant dates, we had different varieties, and we had different plant populations. And so we corrected it for that this year, but much, much less water. Um, and both, both crops were very good uh, you know, on the order of uh, 100,000 uh, pounds per acre. So here's a couple differences, and I'm probably out of time. <laughs> Got, uh, <clears throat> got about uh, three minutes, Neil. Okay, let me move on to uh, just, um, I want to talk a little bit about this forage study that we're doing. And th this is a really a big interest to the state engineer's office because when somebody wants to move their water right, they use alfalfa consumptive use. And so there's um, kind of a pilot project they're looking at, can, can they just let somebody divert their alfalfa water use and use it as they will on, and maybe even change the acreage and the location, just worried about depletion. And so we're, we're doing a project, and I talked to this about the double cropping of corn, and then the and triticale, and there's a farmer that does a lot of that, and he's getting uh, higher yields, and so we're just finding out how much water it's taking. Uh, it's kind of using a warm season crop that does well in the heat, and the cool season crop that does well in the cool weather. And so they're both have pretty good production um, potential during those seasons. And um, here's just putting it in. These are the, these furrows are where the seeds are planted and we're just putting it on, on the bed. These are 22 inch furrows and um, we're just protecting the seed there. It, it, it hasn't germinated yet, but um, we're, we planted those. Here's, here's a, Pictures taken maybe two weeks ago. This was the June 1st or 2nd. And then the problem that we had is we didn't know what the corn would be like. So we ended up with probably a typical spot, but we also ended up with a dry spot, primarily due to, uh, I think, migration of water in the sprinkler system. And we have, uh, they did uh, every other pivot track, uh, no-till, just to see how it worked. But I captured these pictures while they were irrigating and you can see the the no-till certainly was not ponding the water like the um, till tilled ground and we'll see how that ends up with yields they're they're going to go in even though it's silage they have a silage yield monitor so they'll uh, on their silage chopper so they'll get that and we'll get that and then we've got alfalfa fields too and we just put the instrumentation by the wheel track but the sensors are about 20 feet out and we have a, a conduit that's buried into it. The same thing, we, we put those sensors in without the, killing an alfalfa plant and then we never go back to that site and they farm right over it. And so we're just waiting to see how that data turns out. Uh, we um, still haven't analyzed it yet, but we hope we're getting a good set of data. So questions. 